but now it's perfect. So I love that I can wear this tripled up like this. So if it's really cold outside, I've got my jacket on and you know, my hat and I'm just really covered up. But the other thing I like to do, and I did show this last week, but I'm gonna show it again. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 222 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Monday, March something, 25th. <laughs> and I am coming to you out of our 24th state of Washington. I am in Kent, Washington right now, which is uh, like an area around Seattle. And I am at my friend Heather's house in her craft room, which is so fun. I haven't done, I don't think a, well, maybe a while ago, not since we started traveling, have I done a podcast in a friend's house in their craft room, but I feel like this needs to be more of a thing. It's really fun to go outside and film in the places that we are, but it's also really cool to like see different people's spaces, right? I think it's really fun. And thank you, Heather, for allowing me to do this today. Um, she's got some really cute things. I'm not sure if you can like see them because I'm in front of them. This right here is the coolest stitch marker holder ever. And then she has a really beautiful, I think this is cross stitch. It says Nitty Heather on it, which is super, super sweet. And so many places around her house, you see this? Oh gosh, hold on, I gotta show you. <laughs> In several places around her house, she has these glass containers with scraps. How cool is that? Turned it into art. I just absolutely love it. Also, I think that's a Musborough hat. <laughs> very, very fun. Anyway, it's great to be in uh, in house. We've gotten to stay here for a couple of nights, which is just lovely. And now getting to record here is just a cherry on top. Before we get into the episode, I want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for being the sponsor of today's podcast. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for growing your business online. Squarespace makes it super easy to create a beautiful website, sell digital or physical products, and share your creative content online. I will be sharing more about how I use Squarespace for Love & Stitches later on in the episode. For now, let's get right into it. First up today is a finished, finished object. It doesn't have pictures yet. That makes it finished, 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 but it has been blocked. <laughs> so I had finished just last week binding everything off and now I've woven in the ends, I've blocked it and I'm so excited. So this is the Traveler's Loop by Dawn Barker and I made some slight modifications. I went, I used a different yarn, um, actually, you know what, I think I put my project bag already into the van, so I don't have the tag with me, but I used American Made Alpaca, which is a 70% alpaca, 30% wool blend, and it is a sport weight, or yeah, I think it's sport weight. So I went up a needle size, I used a size six needle instead of a five, the pattern is written for fingering weight, and instead of using two colors to do helical knitting, I just used my two balls of yarn to do helical knitting. Um, that way I could blend the two together. Um, I think this is a natural color. It's called Fawn. And the two skeins were pretty similar, but you know, slightly different enough that it made it worth it to change yarns. Um, it was super easy to do the helical knitting. Very, very fun. Um, I did a knit two together through the back loop bind off. I can't remember what the pattern says because I kind of just went off of memory, but I had notes from the last time I made this that that is the bind off that I did. And when I swatched for this, I practiced the bind off because I wanted it, you know, with it being knit, you know, from the biggest side to the end, that didn't make any sense. With it, you know, <laughs> if it was a regular scarf, it wouldn't be as big of an uh, issue to have, you know, different cast on and bind off. But with the bind off being such a big element of it, I wanted to make sure it looked nice, it was stretchy, it was even. So that really helped me to achieve that. So all my ends are woven in. I do need to go back and do some trimming. I had a lot of ends because of an issue I had with the skein. So I don't know if you can see, yeah. So after I blocked it, some of the ends, you know, evened up and everything. So now I just need to go back and do a bunch of trimming. I am pretty happy with the way that my weaving in ends came out because I know this is gonna flip around and everything. So if you can see, 
here, you can just slightly see like a double thickness. So here's one end. So I had two ends here, right? So one went this way, one went that way. You can just see where it is. So I think that's not gonna be a huge deal if this thing gets flipped inside out or like when I'm putting it on and you can see some of the right side, some of the wrong side, that it's not going to be a big deal at all. So I am pretty happy with that. Now I think it did grow a little bit. I sort of measured it before I washed it. I didn't do a proper measurement. I kind of had it laid on my lap and it was measuring the exact finish size of the pattern, which I believe is 30 inches, maybe 30-ish inches and nine inches wide. Now I think it might be a little longer, although I'm not really sure. Let's do, instead of measuring and getting an exact, instead of just figuring it out, let's just guess. <laughs> do you think this is 15 inches? Because if this is 15 inches, then in total it's 60, which is about right. Or maybe it was like 64. So honestly, I think it didn't grow a ton, but it definitely relaxed and everything. And I didn't want it to grow a ton. I wanted it to stay really similar to the size because I really like how it came out. Uh, one other thing that I did in blocking this is I tried out this Sorella wool wash. I have the white birch scent, which smells like pine trees. It smells really, really good. And I like it. It's a no rinse formula, which is really, really nice. I was able to block it here at my friend Heather's and she has a, in her laundry room, she has one of those like big basin sinks and a little tub and I blocked it and it dried really, really fast. So that was really nice because Blocking in the van is not an easy feat and we have to be careful with our water. So that was great to be able to do that. So let me take this off really quickly so I can show you how it's looking now that it's blocked. Probably pretty similar. Okay. Oh yeah. So it definitely grew just slightly, but not too much. And this is the first time I'm trying it on <laughs> again. So it doesn't feel like last week before I blocked it, it felt a little bit like, you know, like tight on my neck, but now it's perfect. So I love that I can wear this tripled up like this. So if it's really cold outside, I've got my jacket on and you know, my hat and I'm just really covered up. But the other thing I like to do, and I did show this last week, but I'm gonna show it again. Is this. <laughs> which I really, really like. It really keeps my ears warm and my neck warm if it's windy outside. And I'll also do this with a hat on as well. That way the back of my head is covered and it keeps me so warm on, on hikes. And then the last way I wear this, if I'm getting a little warm, there we go, is I just do it as a double loop. And I still think it looks cute. And even though it's not covering the front of my neck, it's covering the back of my neck and you know, a little bit of me. And I do find that this keeps me warm, but not too hot if I'm getting a little, a little toasty. Um, honestly, sometimes I'll even just do a singular loop if I'm getting really warm, but I don't wanna, I don't have a bag or something to put this in. And it hangs down a little bit far, but it's not that bad. So I love this, Let me put this back on. I love, love, love this piece. I think it's so functional. I'm so happy with how this came out. Like this vision, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but this vision of having a matching set for a hat, gloves, and scarf that all go together. They're all out of the same yarn. They're all the same color. I'm just so tickled that I actually had the plan. I've had the plan for years, but this, this year I finally was like, this is the actual plan I bought yarn. <laughs> and here are the patterns I'm gonna do. I had the plan. I've executed the plan. I still need to work on my muscle bra hat. Um, I did not get to that this week, but next week I'm hoping. Um, but I'm just happy that I did it and that I actually like it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I have an idea and I think it's a great idea and then I start on it and it's not a great idea. So I have to pivot. But this one really came out exactly how I was hoping. I've got a blanket update. This is the Summer Fade Hexi Blanket by Mallory Crawl. And if you are new here, you're gonna see this one a lot. <laughs> it is something that I'm gonna be working on throughout the entire year until we're done traveling. So I may not share the details every time, but they are all on my project page. I managed to add seven Hexies this week, which is not 
maybe not exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping for a little more, but I really didn't get um, the knitting time and crochet time that I thought. Uh, we were, I feel like we stopped a lot in our driving. And if we're doing a lot of stopping and going, it just, it's hard for me to squeeze in, you know, a little bit of knitting and crochet here and there. So all in all, that's okay. I'm pretty pleased with what I was able to do. So I started adding in here. Uh, I love this little stitch marker. I just pulled it out today, so I'll probably have it on here for next week too, but it's been fun switching them out. This is a little peanut butter and jelly um, triceratops. It has a really cute name, like a, I can't remember. The, the designer, the person who makes these is Della Dino. And they are so creative. Oops, it looks like I lost an eye. Well, I am a little bit rough on my <laughs> on my stitch markers, but that's okay. But it's so cute, right? So I put that one in the first one that I did this week. And then I have managed to work through all of these up to here. And all of these are from Oregon. They're from the Row City Yarn Crawl that I was on two weekends ago. I'm still working through that yarn, but I feel like I've achieved a milestone because I've used all of my full skeins of yarn that I got in Oregon, except for one that I got in Oregon, but it's a Washington dyer. So I'm saving it for my Washington segment of my blanket. So I still have a lot to go. <laughs> it doesn't mean I, just because I've used up all the full skeins, doesn't mean I have any less uh, work to do on here. I think I have five mini skeins here and six more mini skeins, it looks like, inside here. So I have 12 more colors to go, and then I will have completed my Oregon purchases, which feels really good because I got a lot of yarn, like 26 colors or something in Oregon. And then I will be working on my California ones next because then I went on the Bay Area yarn crawl and then I will go into Washington since that's where I am now. So I'm kind of picking and choosing, not maybe doing the exact order that I bought them in for this segment, just because we've done a lot of back and forth into California. And it just, it just feels right in my mind that way. And it's my blanket and I'm gonna do it the way that, <laughs> that I wanna do it. Um, but let me share with you the colors that I have done this week. Hang on, let me get my computer here. And so I can see, so every single, Hexi that I've done, I have been adding to my project page and I put the dyer and colorway name in the like description or like the notes part, but I also put it in the photos. So each photo has a little caption underneath it that says what color it is. And that way I will never be able to forget what they are. And it's easy for anyone else who wants to find them if these colors are replicable. Oh, it looks like I actually haven't done the last two whoops i will have those done before we get up but i think i can remember okay so let me set this down Ooh. so the first three are all from fiona k uh she had four crawl colorways <laughs> which is a lot and they were all like i think they were all rock themed is that right like actual rocks like gemstones or something you can tell me because i don't know based on the name of these. So this one, the first one here, well, this was the first one actually, but I finished it last week. So the first one for this week is Fiona K and it is called Flower Agate or Agate or something like that. I don't know how to say that exactly. This one's really cool. It's like black and burgundy and pretty. This one is called uh, Rhodochrosite. I'm also trying to read this from like way the heck on the floor there. So I might be missing some letters. And then this last one from Fiona K is called Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is flower agate. This one is fluorite. Fluorite, rhodochrosite, and flower agate. Super cool. And then we move into this one. So this yarn is not technically dyed in Oregon, but I did get it in Oregon. And it was a special colorway at uh, one of the yarn stores there. Oh, crap. Which one was it? For yarn's sake. And this is Dream and Color Smushy. I love this base. It is so, it's so smushy. It's so great actually. And this is called Razzle Dazzle and it's actually an assigned pooling colorway. And it's so fun. I think it comes out really nicely even if you're not doing assigned pooling, it still clusters in the stitches that you're doing. These next two are from Knitted Wit. And this one is called Quack 
Nation. Quack Nation or is it Quack Attack? Nope, Quack Attack. Quack Attack for the Oregon Ducks. And then this one is called PDX Carpet for the carpet at the Portland airport. <laughs> and then the last one here is from Ritual Dyes. This was one of their show colorways called Frogberry, or uh, Crawl Colorways for the crawl. So, so many fun and different exclusive things in here from that crawl. It's been, it's been really cool to like go back through and just remember that weekend because it was a really, really fun and special time. I'm gonna take back being hard on myself because I forgot that I did get some sock knitting done this week, which is more than I can say for last week. So I started a second sock. The first one already done. This is the Nitty Natty colorway from Arkansas Yarn Company. And I am doing the Vanilla is the New Black pattern, but I did change it a little bit and I did two by two ribbing all throughout the leg. And then I just switched to regular old stockinette for the foot. Here is the yarn from Arkansas Yarn Company and Nitty Natty, which we collaborated on together. It's coming out so, so nicely. Oh, found my notions pouch. I don't wanna put that in the project bag or I forget where it is. So I started on this one, I don't remember. I needed something I think to work on for something. Maybe it was just in the car or reading in the morning or whatnot. And as you can see, it is not on any needles. And that is because <laughs> I had this yesterday. Here's the needles, they're right here. Um, I had this yesterday to take into a Seattle Kraken hockey game and Climate Pledge Arena does not allow knitting needles, which I did check in advance and I kind of knew that, but it wasn't really like, forefronted information. So I thought, eh, maybe it will be fine. It was not fine, but I did have a backup and I brought in, I brought this and then I brought crochet hooks. So when they said no knitting needles, I was like, all right, pulled my knitting needles out. I was just going to toss them because we didn't have a car to go back to and put things away in. And even though I hated that and it is a waste, um, I wanted to have my knitting like throughout the day that we were in Seattle. But then they saw my crochet hooks and they said I couldn't bring my crochet hooks. And I was like, but they're hooks, but they're curved. Anyway, it's always up to the security uh, or like what, it, that's not the right word for them. Um, the people that are like doing, what are they called? Oh my gosh, I feel bad because I'm not saying the right name. But anyway, it's always up to them and their discretion. There are rules, but if they deem something to be dangerous or not allowed or prohibited, they can just tell you that and then that's that's what you have to go by which is not something i'm going to argue with so when they said i couldn't bring my crochet hooks and i had two of them i was like you know what i'm just going to take all my stuff and i'm going to go pay for a locker <laughs> because it's not worth me losing you know needles that are like what 12 to 16 dollars and then each of my hooks i had two hooks and they were like eight dollars a piece and then we also had some other knitter knitters with us and so they were having to get rid of their needles so i got everyone's needles <laughs> and i took them and i got a locker and all was well um, but anyway i need to get that back onto the needles and continue to work on that and that will be because now i'm finished with my traveler's loop that was kind of my easy simple knitting for driving for talking to people and all of that now this will be the project. I'm really itching to get some things cleared off my needles and kind of reduce the number of projects that I'm working on. I also made some progress on my Greatest Journey Adventure socks. We are almost to the end of our Greatest Journey Adventure uh, make along. So we have some prizes to pull for that. But these socks, I am working on the second sock. I keep in my it's a chalk bag technically, but this is my hiking bag because it has a clip or a belt that I can just put around and use while hiking. And I absolutely love it. So I kind of keep them <laughs> together like this, but we did a bit of hiking in Olympic National Park this weekend. And I did most of the heel increases. And then I just barely have started on the heel turn with the short rows. So just a little bit. 
Now this yarn is from Wool and Women Fibers, as is the bag, the project bag. And we collaborated on this colorway uh, to call it the greatest yarning adventure because that is the trip that we are on right now. And then this stitch marker, I when I posted this on my Instagram stories, somebody was like, oh, it's like, looks just like Lydia. That's so perfect. I'm like, this actually is Lydia. Sam designed this to look like Lydia. Isn't that so fun? Oh my gosh, I feel like it's hard to see. There we go. It is Lydia. Isn't it so cute? <laughs> so I'm really, really happy with how these are coming out. And I save these to work on only when we're doing something adventurous like hiking or whatever. So they've been kind of slow moving, but I am, I am getting there. Um, and then the pattern is also vanilla is the new black. I just added in some fun stripes at the top and other things. I think I need to update my project back because I'm not 100% sure I've put my notes in there because I have my notes on my phone as well. When I started these socks mm, a couple months ago, we were in Big Bend National Park and I had no service. So I started my notes like in a note on my phone instead of on Ravelry. <laughs> so I think I still need to transfer all that over and get everything organized, but hopefully I can remember and get that done before this podcast goes out. I do have one new project for this week, and it's kind of a quick little weekend project that I didn't finish on the weekend, but I will finish it up. And I have it in a really cute bag that my friend Julie gave to me. And actually she made this with her Cricut and it says travel on it. You will see that really well. And just has like little kind of passport stamp things. And I can't read this backwards right now. Hold on, what does it say? Um, my heart was made to travel. So sweet and like a perfect size for just a grab and go project. So I wanted to try out my Sorella sock minis. This is their uh, wool and nylon base. It's an 80-20 and it's a two ply and it is really nice. So one purpose of this project was to try out the minis. The other purpose was I wanted to make something that I could give away to our Knit for Food donors. So Knit for Food happened this past weekend. I'll have an update about that in the new segment. But typically, well, last year at least, last year was the first year I did it. I was able to participate on that day and actually knit something on that day. And I made, I think, two yarn cozies last year and then picked randomly from the people that donated under Love and Stitches and gave those away. So I wanted to do that again this year, but I never did actually get to start something on that day. It was just a busy day. So I started it yesterday and I am making a crochet yarn cozy. So I have a pattern for this on Ravelry. It is, uh, there's different sizes, but the one I'm making is for a 100 gram cake of fingering weight or DK um, or sport weight yarn. You can fit inside here. So it'll be taller and then it'll kind of close a little bit at the top and it has an eye cord. It's, I think looks really nice and polished, but I wanted to do something fun with multiple colors. So I have five colors in this mini skein set. I started off with the green on the bottom and for the first like six rows and then for, I'm sorry, five rows. And then for everything else, I'm doing four rows of each color. So this set was very much kind of like greens, blues, and tans. So it's got one of the greens and one of the creams already. And then I think I have another darker cream and then a, like an icy kind of bluey green. And then I believe I will end with the eye cord of the green again. So it'll kind of go, you know, through all the colors and then back to green, which will be really fun. And I'm gonna do my best to update my project page with how much yarn I've used. There's 20 grams in each of these balls. And you can see, I still have plenty of the first one that I used, even though I did the whole entire bottom of the skein or of the cozy in that. So I wanted to, I've been wanting to do a stripey one for a while. I've seen some other people do it. And I think it's such a cute way to like use up small leftovers and make something really fun and really cute. So this is a quick project. Again, I would have worked on it more <laughs> yesterday if I had been able to bring it into the hockey game. Um, this was my backup project. But yeah, these are pretty small crochet hooks. So if you're going to Climate Pledge Arena for anything, maybe don't. 
<laughs> don't bring anything. Or I even saw a large, like a J crochet hook that somebody had thrown in the trash because they weren't allowed to bring it in. So such a bummer. Again, not the biggest bummer. There are worse things, but when it's funny because some places uh, like stadiums and arenas actually have a knit night, like a stitch and pitch at baseball and things like that. So everywhere has different rules and that's fine. But yeah, I'm still a little bitter, <laughs> still slightly bitter about that, but I'm excited to get back to this project, get it finished up. And then I might just make a second one and have uh, two yarn cozies to give away. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's podcast. Last year, I switched knittingnatty.com over to Squarespace because I love how easy their site is to use. In just a few clicks, I was able to create my own website and then just tweak things from there. One thing that I just cannot get over is how easy it is to edit with the modular screen. You just click and drag things or click into a text box. It's so intuitive and so much easier than code. There is no prior website experience required because you can get started easily with one of their many templates. Squarespace has a range of options, so you're covered whether you want to sell physical products like yarn or stitch markers, or even digital products like memberships or patterns. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash nitty and use code nitty natty to get 10% off your first website or domain. Now back to the video. One of the things that we get asked the most is how often do we cook in the van and can we cook in the van and what do we have to cook with and what do we make? <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to include for this week's in our travel segment, a little cooking section. So you're gonna see uh, several of the different meals that we make all the time. You're gonna see my oats because that's what I eat for breakfast every single day. Some of the things we do for lunch, uh, what Kent cooks it for dinner because he is the cook. And then also just what our kitchen setup looks like in the van. So if you have any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer. It's been an adventure in itself, just figuring out what to do, but it's actually not so bad to cook in the van. The harder thing is definitely the dishes. So enjoy this in our travels segment. Thought I'd start with a brief tour of our kitchen and kind of what we're working with here. Right under this dish mat and all of these dishes, we actually have a one burner electric stove. This right here is a sink. This cool little thing is a extra countertop. So we've got a sink, no disposal, of course. And then it just works like a regular sink, except you have to kind of plan ahead if you wanna do hot water and heat it. We never do that, so we just use cold water. We used to have a paper towel roll thing right here, but it just broke this week. So now it's just holding my crochet plant. We have a microwave that's actually a pretty good size. And we just leave in here a microwavable plate because our other plates are not microwavable. And then this cute little thing was gifted to me from my friend Cindy. Right below that is the refrigerator. And actually it's a pretty big refrigerator too. It's got a lock on it. Uh, the handle's also locked, you know, so it doesn't open up while we are driving. We have it fairly stocked right now. We just went to the store. We have filtered water, room on the door. And then right below that, we have this drawer. And this we have functioning as a refrigerator right now. So mostly it just has beverages in it and some sandwich meat, um, but we can actually turn this into a freezer and we're thinking about doing that soon. This right here is our pantry. And then we also have more food in this basket. Below the stovetop, we have three pretty spacious drawers where we keep various kitchen things. Even our pots fit down there. And then lastly, we have our cute little spice rack that came with the van. And then these are just spices. I made all of these quite a few years ago. We have several meals that we kind of cook on rotation that are just easy and quick and don't use a lot of dishes. We make tacos a lot. Sometimes we do ground beef, sometimes we do turkey. That's pretty much it. <laughs> One time we did like pork fajita kind of thing. Um, we make uh, Korean beef bowls a lot. It's just, we have a little rice cooker that's really convenient. Um, but tonight, because we are stopped at a campsite and we have a little more time, a little more space, more water to wash dishes, we are going to be making something else. Kent is actually the chef 
He makes almost all of our meals. What are you making tonight, Ken? We are going to have Sloppy Joes. All right, what you got? Uh, but with turkey, because we're healthy and it was on sale at Safeway. <laughs> oh, we also have some... Basically, we're getting rid of some cans we've acquired in our journey. Exactly. So we have these beans. I don't know where we got these, but, you know, they're still good for two more years. Perfect. Um, we have canned green beans, which we normally don't do, but we have this, so we're going to do it. Yeah. And then we have the Walmart brand Sloppy Joe sauce. Yes, Kent is very much into getting some deals. And then I've just made some mac and cheese because we only have the one burner. We kind of have to be... mac and cheese. Oh, I'm sorry. What was it? It was bunnies and cheese or something. Yes. It's sitting over there with the lid on, hopefully staying warm. Um, so we're going to do, obviously, the meat on the stove. The, the, mm. the mac and cheese took the stove. Now the meat. And then I'm going to warm up the beans in the microwave. So even though Kent is the one who cooks our meals most of the time, I'm almost always the one who puts it on the plate because for some reason, Kent hates doing that. So everything is cooked, everything is ready. I am just going to assemble everything and then I think we're gonna sit down and watch a movie, a new movie. Let's talk about lunches. So for lunches, most of the time, we are doing something fast, no cook, like making a sandwich. We do a lot of peanut butter and honey. We do a lot of sandwich meat, add some spinach, you know, some stuff to jazz it up. I have this amazing mustard right now that I got from one of Kent's friend's moms. Hold on, let me give myself more light. There we go. Kent's friend's mom's in California and it's the best mustard I've ever had. And it's ruined all other mustards for me, but that's okay. I'm savoring it while I have it. Um, but on occasion, we have a little bit of extra time to do some leftovers. So today I'm actually warming up leftover taco meat. So I've just warmed it in the microwave and all of these containers, when we started out, <laughs> when we started out on our trip, we had one, actually we had no storage containers. That's not true. We had two like small glass storage containers. I really like glass cause I just think it's easier to clean and it's easier to microwave and all of those things and it doesn't stain like plastic does. But we started buying a lot of sandwich meat, like I was saying, and so I started saving these because they're perfect. They come with lids and hey, way better for the environment to hang on to it. If you're somebody who does a lot of sandwich meat in containers and then you're always like looking for a leftover container to, I don't know, send with your kids to school or like take a snack or take a sandwich or even peanut butter crackers. I like to use these lightweight plastic ones for when I'm like on the go. And then also you don't have to worry about anyone losing them, which is nice. So I'm just gonna warm up some tortillas. I've already warmed up our turkey taco meat that we made the other night and we have for dinner. We've got some cheese and then also, oh yeah, let me show you this. In the fridge, we have a sauce level where occasionally we go to places like Del Taco or Taco Bell and we save the sauces. <laughs> and that's what we like to use since we have tacos a lot. We have one last meal to cover, which is breakfast, arguably the most important rule of the day. So let's talk about coffee first. This cabinet up here above the sink is my coffee thing. And I don't know if I can pull it down right now, but basically I have one coffee cup that I use. I like using the Yeti just because it hold, makes everything hot and it's easy to use when we are moving. And then I have an AeroPress. Actually, I'll bring it all down to show you. So the AeroPress is this system that is 
really compact and really lightweight and takes no like electric it needs nothing no power absolutely nothing so here's the whole thing and i absolutely love it honestly i think i will continue using it even after we're not doing the van so this is the main thing it consists of a container i don't know what this is called and a plunger that you press the coffee through it's essentially like an easier french press and it's also very easy to clean filters which i just have in a ziploc bag you can put the filter into here you put it on the bottom like so you this is a scoop scoop your coffee in stir and then you take this and you plunge it down and then it's super easy you just pop this off the small filter and the coffee grounds go in the trash and then you just add water so all i need aside from these things is i need a way to heat my water and i have two ways to do that so when the weather is great or nice or just dry I have butane or propane or whatever, and I have a jet boil. This gets things going, gets my water heated up in like a minute and a half, which is awesome. But what I do most of the time, just cause it's easier, is I actually just get a pot out and I boil water on the stove. This is especially great if it's super cold, super hot, rainy, or we're in a situation where we're not at a campsite and I don't want to step outside. Like I have to be outside in order to do the butane. I've tried doing it like just on the stair step standing outside and it's like not the safest situation. You're supposed to be outside. So that's it for coffee. Pretty simple, pretty easy, very tasty. I like to get local coffee when I can, but I'm a big flavored coffee person and I can't find that all the time. So I usually have my mom send me fresh market coffee because I love it so much. To actually eat for breakfast, because I wake up hungry. I'm just one of those people. I wake up hungry. I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to have my coffee and I'm ready to drink a bunch of water. I'm just like ready to start my day that way. So I like to do something that I've been eating for years. It was the perfect breakfast for when I was a teacher and I would prepare it in like four different portions and I could just grab and go one on my way to school. It's still the perfect breakfast for van life because I can prep about four to five days all in advance. And then in the morning, all I have to do is pull it from the fridge and eat it. There's no cooking, there's no additional mess, and it is overnight oats. And this is the only like recipe I'm gonna get into because I feel like I've kind of nailed a consistency that I really like. And it's also very customizable for you. Your core components are going to be oats, of course. I like old fashioned milk. I do almond milk and yogurt. I like to do plain Greek yogurt. And for this, you really just need a ratio of the same amount of oats and yogurt and half that amount of milk. So for each portion, like each serving, I'm basically doing half a cup, half a cup, a quarter cup, and then everything else is to taste. I've always liked to use the least amount of dishes as possible, and that is even more important in the van. So I just have one big container that I make, again, about four portions. I do two full cups of oats and yogurt and one cup of milk, um, and I have to use one scoop, one container, and a spoon, and that's all that I have to make dirty. So in order to do that, this may be getting too into it. I start with my oats. This is 100% optional, but I have been enjoying adding chia seeds lately because I'm trying to get more protein to stay more full in the morning. So I'll usually do like half a cup of chia seeds. And when you add chia seeds, because they take a lot of liquid, I try to add just a tiny bit more milk. Now that my dry stuff is done, I am going to move on to the yogurt. I can just use the same guy here. And I like getting the plain yogurt because then I just add honey to sweeten things. Um, the plain yogurt is nice because it doesn't come, you know, it doesn't have any sugar in it already. And that means I can give a little bit to my buddy toaster. Last up for our core ingredients is the milk. I just use the same measuring cup. And again, the milk is gonna be about like half as much as the oats and the yogurt. And then because I added the chia seeds, I'll just do a little bit more. 
Here's where it gets fun because you can kind of make these any flavor that you want. You definitely want a sweetener, which I like to use honey, or you can just use flavored yogurt. I like to flavor mine with cinnamon. And then I've been kind of into a little bit. I've been eating this for like our entire van ride since uh, August, um, making these kind of like apple pie like. So I've also got some nutmeg in here and then an apple that I'm going to cut up. But to make this even easier, what I used to do is I would buy frozen berries at Target because it was like the cheapest place and you just throw the frozen berries on top and you're done. So I like to put all the ingredients in aside from the fruit, um, stir it up, and then I add the fruit last, stir it in, and then it's gonna be good for like four to five days. This is what I like mine looking like. I do like it to be a little bit on the thicker side and it will thicken up as the oats and the chia seeds absorb all that liquid overnight. If you like it a little thinner, just add a little more milk or maybe not as much yogurt. Now we just need to add our apples. And once we stir these in, we are good to go. And again, you just refrigerate it at least overnight. And for the rest of the time, I'll be eating off of this for like anywhere from four to five days. Bon appetit. So we didn't do a vlog vlog this week. We kind of just focused on one thing in particular, but we did actually make an entire vlog by itself that went out on Tuesday. So if you want to see more of what like the week encompassed, you're definitely going to get that in that video. There's still a couple other things that happened outside of those that I want to highlight and share with you. So we went to a yarn store in Paulsbo, Washington called Heart to Heart, and we did include that in the vlog. So go there and look at the Tuesday vlog and you'll see a lot more of the store. But this store was super great. The owner, Lisa, um, when I walked in, she was like, oh, hi, Natalie. And I'm like, wait, do you know who I am? This is wild. Um, so we ended up spending quite a bit of time there. They also had a weird sister's trunk show. So we went to, not to confuse anyone, because I was confused, we went to the weird sister's yarn shop in Portland. But then there's also, oh, I didn't bring it in here. Oh, dang it, it's in the, actually in the car. Well, I'll show you when it gets into my blanket, but um, there's Weird Sisters yarn and fibers and they are super cool. Uh, it is Chelsea and Megan, I believe were their names. And they're both artists. So they both design stickers and magnets and then also the labels for all of their collections. They do a lot of fandoms. Um, they also uh, design the, like the designs that they make, they get printed into fabric and then they make fabric or project bags. So if you like, D and D or Gilmore Girls or I don't know like so many different things you're gonna love them uh, so definitely find them and follow them because they are super super cool so that trunk show was going on at the yarn store and I got a couple skeins of yarn um, yeah I didn't bring them in dang okay you'll see them soon though you'll see them in the blanket soon <laughs> um, so that was a really really fun thing and again we've highlighted it in the vlog if you want to go and check that out sorry. I should bring my computer up here so I can see it a little bit better. Um, the other big highlight of this week is that we got to spend time in Seattle with some Love and Stitches members. And we've been planning this for so long because we decided to go to a Seattle Kraken hockey game. And I already talked a little bit about how that went with the knitting. <laughs> But that was just one small blip and a really wonderful day. Um, we met up earlier in the day. We found a coffee shop to sit and knit in. We went to Pike's Market. We walked down to the waterfront. Um, the weather was really great. It was a, just slightly chilly, but sunny and not raining, which was, you know, something to enjoy <laughs> in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we also went to a yarn store right in Pike's Pike's Place Market. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is it Pike's Market? Pike's Place Market. I should have looked that up better. Uh, but we went to So Much Yarn. And this is a yarn store I've actually been to before. So that was kind of fun to go back. It's been many years since I've been to Seattle and been to that yarn store. Um, but I did get a skein of yarn. This one I remembered to bring in. 
Actually, because I got it yesterday, it was still here inside the house. I got this uh, Washington dyer called Lyrical Fibers from Spokane. And this colorway is called A Million Dreams, which is from The Greatest Showman. And all of their yarns had a little musical note stitch marker. That's what that thing is called. So yeah, this is a really fun color and will be super, super fun for my blanket. And then um, at the Kraken game, we had a great time despite the yarn incident. Uh, we had so much fun hanging out and watching the game. The Kraken did not have so much fun because they got absolutely crushed, uh, but that didn't really affect us so much. We would have loved to see them win or <clears throat> score a few more goals, but whatever, that's that's okay. Um, Kent actually had something really fun planned for our Love and Stitches members. It was kind of a small group because we did start planning it in October. So we didn't get all of our Seattle Love and Stitches members together, but quite a few of them. And we had found in Arkansas, of all places, a Seattle Kraken colorway. And it's a self-striping colorway from Night Owl Fibers. Really, really beautiful. So we picked that up and we have been, you know, bringing it with us along for the last few weeks to come to this game. So <laughs> Kent assigned everyone a couple of players and whoever's player scored first, they won the skein of yarn. So everyone was kind of invested in the game until the Kraken scored. I mean, even after that too, but more invested because of the yarn. And Heather, who I'm staying with here at her house, won that skein, <laughs> which is so fun. Um, I also wanted to share with you a couple of the goodies that uh, I get, was gifted uh, from my members. So this one is from Smutzarella, Smutzarella, Smutzarella uh, yarn, another Washington dyer. And this was given to me um, from Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. I think because it's a little dark in here, you can't really see how the gradient goes, but it is a gradient and it is called the Mystery of Scarlet Plum. So six mini skeins in different colors in there, which is fun. And then Julie, who drove all the way from Idaho um, to come and see us, and they had some other stuff going on too in Seattle, but uh, she made all of these super cool things. She's also the one who made this bag. And then she made all of us some different stitch markers. And then she made me a couple of travel ones, which is fun. So this is so cool. It's got the national park stuff on it and you can you know write your name on it and kind of attach it to your project bag so i have a national park project bag that i figured i would put that on which will be fun and then she made us all a bunch of little seattle things so let's see that's the skyline then this one right here is a hockey puck oh i can see that it's a hockey puck and then there was one other, where did it go? Oh, this one says Kraken on it and has the logo. Uh, can you see it? Kind of. And then also a peep. Do you guys like peeps? I'm not a marshmallow person, but I think they're cute. And then the last one is a camper van. Like with mountains and trees and everything, which is so special. So cool. Anyway, that was so, so fun. And I was really, really grateful to get that. So we had a wonderful, wonderful day. And our time in the Pacific Northwest has been just, uh, it's been just amazing. I kind of, I mean, yes, I miss sunshine a little bit, but it has been kind of nice to be here where it feels very cozy and getting to see people and, I don't know, overcast days have been good for podcasting. So cannot complain. And I've been loving this area. We're going to close out today with some news. So first up, I have two videos that have come out since last week. We put out like five videos in the last seven days, which is wild because there was the two Bay Area yarn crawl videos. And then we actually put out a video on Saturday. So what I'd really like to do or start doing is moving our yarn store tours to Saturday so that we can premiere them, which means when the video goes live, everyone can start watching at the same time and we have a live chat going on. 
after the video goes live, the live chat closes, and then the video is just up just like normal. So if you can't make it live, it's okay because it will just go up like normal. But if you can, it's kind of fun to have that community aspect and talk about it and I can answer questions about the shop and then it will replay too on the video if like you wanna see the live chat. So I would like to do that more often. Can't say it's gonna happen every single yarn store tour, but possibly that will be coming, I hope. Let you know, I'll let you know. Um, but this week's yarn store tour was the Modern Skein in Montgomery, Texas, which is about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Houston. It is such a nice shop and they just celebrated their seven year anniversary. So we kind of timed it up with that, um, but definitely go check that one out. They are one of the best um, stores at putting together kits, sharing new yarns with you and they ship everywhere in the world. So even if that's a place you're never going to get to, um, they're just worth following on Instagram. Sharon is amazing. And then, you know, if you ever can't get something at your local yarn store, um, they are more than happy to ship. So that's a great place to follow. And then on Tuesday, we had our day in the life video go live, which includes um, a, a day where we went to Olympic National Park and also just a lot of like day-to-day -day things that we do in the van. Um, so might be doing more vlogs. Um, I have been getting some requests to you know do vlogs like outside of the podcast so that they're there and like separate to watch and everything. So, you know, we're figuring things out still with this, with this travel lifestyle and like what makes sense for us to put out and what we can manage. So we're still playing with things. So let me know what you think of us having a separate vlog. Okay, we need to update for Knit for Food. So knit, the Knit for Food Knit-a-thon happened on Saturday, March 23rd, and all the fundraising is closed now. So I have final numbers. As a Love and Stitches team, we raised $3,425, which is incredible. The original goal I had was $1,000. So we absolutely smashed that. Thank you so, so, so much. As a an entire fundraiser, um, the whole organization raised $374,519. Wait. $374,519. Amazing. And that is going to be split among four different organizations and shared with them. And I just think that is so, so cool. So if you donated underneath the Love and Stitches team, stay tuned. I am working on the yarn cozies and I'm going to be randomly selecting, um, I think two people, uh, to each get something made by me. That's the plan at least, but it might take me a couple of weeks to finish those items. Maybe next year I'll be stationary <laughs> and I can make my items during the day for the knit -a the Love and Stitches membership opens on April 2nd. I will be sending out information very, very soon because that is next week. So please make sure you're on the wait list so that you get the information for that. Uh, then I have several different yarn crawls and events to tell you about. I'm trying to be better about, even if we're not gonna be going on them, sharing here about different things that are happening around the US. So the first one is Yarn Centric in Frederick, Maryland, May 2nd and third. Then the other ones are in this area. So I grabbed the cards from the yarn shop we were at, Heart to Heart. So this one is the P&W Yarn Crawl. It happens in Washington State. And from what I can understand, because I'm not, I don't know the geography of the area, it includes a large part of like, I think Western Washington. So let me just tell you some of the cities. It looks like there's three, six, nine, ten stores. And they are in Auburn, Allen, uh, Paulsbo, Chehalis, Tacoma, Fife, Olympia, Gig Harbor, and two more in Olympia and Paulsbo. So hopefully that gives you a clue <laughs> as to where they are. And this is happening May 2nd through the 5th of this year. Then there is another one a couple of weeks later called the uh, Puget, Puget, Puget Sound. Um, LYS tour. And I'll have links to both of these down below. This one is May 15th to the 19th, and it is 21 yarn stores. And the Puget Sound, I don't know why I can't say that, 
is, from what I understand, the area like surrounding the water between like the main part of Washington and the peninsula. So this may all be not quite correct because again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recap what I was told <laughs> because I don't know the geography of the area, but these both look pretty awesome. So I will not be on these because we will be gone by then. I will also not be at Yarn Centric in Frederick, Maryland, but I wanted to share that in case you're in the area um, so that you can check it out and maybe see some of the stores. Okay, that's it. We got through all of our news and info. Thank you so much for watching the podcast this week. Thank you, Heather, for allowing me to be in your space. This was fun. It was a, a change up from being outside. I don't know where, where we will be next week. Like I literally don't know. We have planned this year up to basically this weekend where we were going to the hockey game. Um, so we have some planning to do. I know at some point we're heading back down south into California again <laughs> to do some national parks. And we have a lot more states to go to, 26 and Washington, D.C. to be exact. So uh, I will keep you updated as we make our plans, where we may be, where we may be doing meetups, um, all of that. The best place is always to follow on Instagram because I can update that more quickly and it happens more than once a week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.